look, we got a ton we want to cover, um, and uh, and and we'll we'll get to all that. But um, I just think it's always fun. Uh, I want to I want to have you just share a little bit of your your history, your story. How did you arrive into crypto? When did you arrive in crypto? Why did you think it was like going to change the world? What kind of what what brought you here? Yeah. Fair. Um, so to be fair, I didn't think it was going to change the world when I first got into it. Um, I was working at a hedge fund called Bay Hill Capital, which is about 45 minutes south of Boston, um, kind of in the middle of nowhere. I was trading equity options. So um, basically S&P 500 names, like all the options that are on that. And like we had like a vol product that we had sort of built around it. So um, that was my job at the time. And I had found out about crypto and this crypto is just Bitcoin, right? Like that was like the whole game then. Um, probably through, I think it was like one of those like crazy anarchist blogs, probably like Zero Hedge. It was like, it was like sort of a known thing, right? Like it lived yeah. in the fringes of markets and like people knew about it. And it had gotten like a lot of like color in like sort of the larger financial world when it like hit a dollar and then when it hit $10. So like we knew sort of about it, but there's an exchange called Bitfloor, which was in New York oh, that yeah. blew up, right? And Roman went to work at GDAX. There's like the whole history of that thing. But uh, they had a maker taker exchange model. So you got paid to provide liquidity. And at the time at the fund I was at, I was specifically dealing with like the hedging of the options. So trading the stock throughout the day to sort of do that. So I'd gotten very into sort of the lower level trading activity, like with the markets, like I was good, like dealing with routing and like different order types. And I was like, all right, well, this crypto thing is like small. I can trade it because there's no conflict of anything I'm doing in my day job. And like, maybe I can make a little money doing it. And that was really how I got started with it. Turned out okay. Yeah, no, don't get me wrong. <laughs> but I didn't know a ton about Bitcoin before I started trading it, right? I was like, all right, well, you can send it. Like, I don't know, I kind of get like the thesis. And then you just go down that rabbit hole, right? And then you're like, well, what is mining? And then you like inevitably lose money trying to be a miner. And then you like try to like figure out, well, like, oh, like maybe I can move it to this exchange and do this arm. So like, that was like the, the gateway drug in the sort of all right. the larger crypto. And then I just like jumped in full time. He was cracking, um, raised some money. I had gotten to know Jesse because I was doing a lot of the volume on cracking at the time, like yeah. a significant amount. It was very small. It's like the whole exchange was only doing a tiny amount. Like I was a portion of it. Um, and then I was like, all right, well, if I'm going to really do this, there's only a couple places that make sense right now. And the exchange is a clear business model. So like you're either a miner or you were sort of a developer for one of the right. software providers, or you were working at one of the exchanges. Um, and that's still kind of true to this day in the sense that like the exchanges are the big business that like generates all the revenue in the industry. So I went to work for Kraken, was there six months. Um, you guys raised money at the time, it was your series A. Um, I was living in Boston still. You guys were like down the street from me, you were in Four Point, I was over on G Street. Oh, I remember. <laughs> yeah, and I shot a cold email in and sort of got to know you guys and then inevitably like made my way over. And yeah. then obviously worked Circle, traded that, built that desk out over like the time. And then now I work with Bobby Cho, uh, Dear W, Julian, who was with us at Circle yeah. um, at the end. And then we're just basically trading the equivalent of what like a hedge fund strategy would be, but um using principal capital currently yeah. so yeah. that's like so but i've been doing it now eight years going on so yeah. i've seen some things and some iterations <laughs> yeah you, you you know where the bodies are buried um some of them <laughs> um so actually so just on the on the on the the origin story as as we say like um i remember when we first met and you know we, we obviously were you know we were all fired up about like hey look this digital currency thing is actually going to become like the way that the payment system works. It's going to be like the way that value moves around and how do we like take fiat, make a digital currency? How do we do all this sort of stuff? And I think obviously for, for you, you were more focused on like, hey, look, there's this great opportunity to trade Bitcoin and this is in Boston and this is a good group of people and, 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 and all that. Um, but like back in the early days, there was sort of like the crypto macro thesis, like by definition, like Bitcoin itself is a macro thesis, right? Um, you know, uh, how early on did you actually buy into the, let's just say like the long thesis, the long kind of global macro thesis that says like the world's going to go to shit and this is, uh, you know, going to grow as a store of value? Probably way later. But what I will say is um, the guy who started Bay Hill, this guy, Alec, was, was like the main trader in the euro dollar option pit way back in the day in yeah. Chicago, right? So, but he was there when the euro got 
created, right? He's like, I, and he, I remember him saying this, he's like, look, like, I've seen the birth of a currency. And he's like, I've seen how this like all kind of plays out and like what has to happen. And he's like, all I know is if this is going to work out, this thing has to go up tremendously in value. He's like, it just like, this doesn't make yeah. any sense like where it is currently. He's like, it's either going to be a zero or this thing's got to go up much higher. So I will say the first time I really thought it could be very large is when he started like advocating the possibility of it. And then you just handicap it. You're like, all right, well, I think it's got this chance of getting there maybe, which is like an impossible task. But like you start to get the idea of like, all right, well, yeah. the, anyway, the baseline's got to grow. I don't think I really started seeing it as like a true form of like value storage or even like this greater idea that like this is like sort of the maybe end result of like where money sort of has to go until way later, like 2015, 2016, where I started, you started seeing material amounts of it yeah. in dollar terms being like kept by counterparties. Yeah. And then specifically like stuff out of Asia where we would like see people that were sort of like only native, like crypto native, right? Like they just lived their entire sort of balance sheet right. was constructed out of it. And that was like, I was like, all right, well, there's like really people that are like doing this, like this is gonna like work. Um, and there's like a trend there. But like when it was, when it was smaller, like it was, I wasn't, it was, I was not a, I was not buying that thesis yet for a bit.